Hello and welcome to the Truckins Are Real podcast. My name is Pete Jones. Well, if you're a regular follower of this podcast, you know it's been a while. Oh yes, my last episode, episode 99, was in June and I've had a bit of a break. Uh, reason being, well, these podcasts take up a lot of time, you know. Every episode there's research and scripted, then they do the recording, and they do the editing, and then all my podcasts are converted over to YouTube, so I've got to add the visuals for YouTube, and it was just taking a long time. And to be honest, I just needed a bit of a break, and my friends at the World Day podcast, uh, they've just uh, finished their podcast um, completely for Savage Worlds, a great podcast that was, and I thought, you know what, maybe I shall have a break too. So that's what I've done. This is a small channel. I don't do it for the amount of listens. Uh, it's just done for my own fun. And I just needed a break from it. And I've been concentrating a bit more on my YouTube stuff. So I thought I'd uh, come back. I'm not going to do as many episodes as I used to. Um, they're going to be more focused on items that interest me. If people want to send in voicemails, please feel free to send them in. But I won't be playing voicemails on the show um, my, my tastes have changed when I listen to other people's podcasts. I usually skip through voicemails. They don't interest me. So if they don't interest me listening to other people's shows, then I can't see the point of putting them on the, um, my own show. But if you want to leave me a voicemail, uh, then please feel free. Um, I can listen to them. And if there's anything of interest there that I think is worthy of putting on a podcast show, then I will uh, certainly add those topics. So my plans going forward is I'm probably going to make some more YouTube vids. I enjoy making those. They take, believe it or not, they actually take less time to do than the audio podcast. And but the tutorials and walkthroughs for things like Foundry and general RPG stuff, I really enjoy doing those. What have I been up to? Well, gaming-wise, it's been really busy. My Adventures in Middle Earth game is still running bi-weekly online. Although we've got face-to-face gaming back now, we've decided to keep that online gaming going. So we alternate. So I run Adventures in Middle Earth every other week, and we're up to session 24 now, so that's going well. The other week, um, I play in a 5e game, which is Tales from the Yawning Portal, which is the old G1 to G3 Giants uh, modules. And that's run by one of my good friends, Colin Sinclair, who occasionally assists this show. So I'm playing a, a halfly magic user in that one. So that's every other week. And then besides that, our face-to-face group got back together and they've asked me to run a horror RPG once a month. So again, we've decided to go for 5e because everybody's comfortable with that. Half the players have been playing on the lines and other rules inside out. And the other half of players have all played some D&D, so know that. I'm running Curse of Strahd. Don't think they've realised it's Strahd at the moment. All they know, well, I've started with Death House at level one. So they know there's, there's some vampire involved, but they haven't cottoned onto Strahd yet. And I don't think any of the six players I've got I've ever played anyway, so that's not an issue. And uh, also started off, I'm playing Savage Worlds. Oh, I know. You know what I think of Savage Worlds? Well, some of you do. So yeah, playing Savage Worlds. Uh, Gary McCallum from the great Murder Hobo show is running the last parsec, Iron Gate. That is every other week, and that is broadcast on Twitch and YouTube, the Murder Hope Show. Yes, we're doing Savage Worlds. I'm quite enjoying it. We did the first chase, and you know, I'm not a big fan of chases, don't you, Eric and Gary? But to be fair, Gary did a good job of the chase. Still not a fan of them, though. I think they're a bit too a bit too metagamey and a bit too... take me out of the, um, the game a bit too much, but hey, it's uh, great fun with great people. But uh, let's get on to the main topic, because let's face it, that's why you're all here. So today I'm going to be looking at uh, Index Card RPG. This is the new Master Edition by Hankrin Fernell, also known as Brandish Gilhelm and Ingrid Bernal. What his real name is, I don't think anybody knows. If you don't know Hank, he ran the old Drunken and Dragons YouTube channel, which uh, sort of changed into the Runehammer branding, and that's when I first discovered Hank. He's a great artist. Uh, he does, uh, he's done art for projects such as Vigilante City, uh, Mecha Hack by Absolute Tabletop, and I like his art style. It's like a uh, an inky, a cartoony style, which I, I really like. He's also got a very successful Patreon, 
with a great community on Discord. I've been a Patreon for some time now, and you can become a Patreon from it of his for as little as one dollar a month and he comes up with some great ideas on there he has also got the arun hammer vtt or virtual tabletop which was you had to be a paid patron of his um, now it's open for everyone for free uh, as long as you've got a patron account you don't have to subscribe to anybody else just have a, a free patron account and rune hammer vtt is a nice simple vtt with uh, visuals some dice rolling tokens and some music. Um, if you've seen Albert Rodeo, it's a bit like a stripped down Albert Rodeo, although it did come out slightly before it. Index Card RPG, I've been a big fan of for a long time now. It was launched in 2016, and when it first came out, it's basically index cards for use in um, RPGs. But he actually launched his own version of an RPG in 2017. That was Index ICRPG 2nd Edition. And that was available in PDF. And it was also available as a hardback, which uh, I've got. In 2017, he also provided a free quick start. And if you're used to D20 rules, um, the D&Ds of this world, that is what the ICRPG is based on. There's been several supplements over the years. Uh, there was the Worlds supplement in 2018, which added the Alfheim fantasy setting. Uh, it added Warp Shell, which is his sci-fi setting. Ghost Mountain, which is a Weird West setting. And Advanced Character Progression, called Milestones. In 2018, the Blood and Snow supplement was released, which is Ice Age Adventures. In 2019, he released three or four new supplements. There was Magic, which added new magic systems and spells. There was Bear Cats, which was a Red Dawn setting. Xeno Dead Zone, which is an alien setting. And Vigilante City, which is a superhero setting using Blood. Uh, games is a setting of Vigilante City, porting it across to ICRPG, and Hank did the artwork for Bloke Games and the Vigilante City. Then in 2020, with Alex Alvarez, he released the Altered State setting and rules, which is your cyberpunk. And then in 2020, he did a new second edition quick start, which made some changes, uh, taking ideas from Altered State and Vigilante City. So that takes us up to the new Master Edition, which is a consolidation of the previous editions and supplements. This is currently available from Modifius Entertainment. Oh yes, he's got a big publisher, and good luck to him. So for £32.50, you can get the new Master Edition in hardback version with a free PDF. Or if you want a fancy collector's edition, I think that's about 50 quid. Um, it's got the same content, but it's got fancy covers with a faux leatherette and embossing and all that sort of stuff. At the moment, for uh, people overseas and across the pond in America, don't order it yet because the shipping is a bit expensive. There's going to have a US and Canada distributor where you can get it at a decent price and decent shipping. Um, and there's a PDF-only version coming later. So this new version has got 400 pages. As I said, it consolidates the previous editions with some of the supplements. And I don't believe Hank's doing this, but all previous purchases of ICRPG will get the core rules as a free upgrade as a PDF. Um, I'm entitled to that, but you know what? I love his rules, so I've paid the, forget the hardback version and you get to the other stuff as well. So in this review, I'm not uh, going to go uh, through it bit by bit um, because I have reviewed ICRPG twice before. In episode 32, I did the full ICRPG review and in episode 68, I did the quick start. So if you want to know more about the rules, then go back to those episodes and listen to them. The Master Edition uses the same layout and style as the previous edition. What I like about Hank, he's got cl clear, concise writing style, and it really feels as if he's talking directly to you. So the core system has not changed. It's compatible with previous versions and other D20 games. So basically, you're rolling your D20, adding an attribute, and you're trying to beat a set target number. Of course, it uses the six core attributes of strength, intelligence, dexterity, wisdom, constitution, and charisma. Effort has had a slight change, it's now added D8 for guns, which was the D8 was previously for the magic effort, and magic and energy weapons are now a D10. Dying has got a little bit more brutal, um, and the changes now adopt the quick start version from 2E, so you die in D4 rounds, not D6. 
the other changes is to recovery. Recovery now, instead of just uh, if you beat the target number with a successful roll, you just got one hit point. Now you get one hit point plus your constitution bonus. And healing now uses a D10 for magical healing or a D6 for using medical tools or bandages. Hero coins. So hero coins are now being moved to the core rules, not the GM section, because I think nearly every ICRPG game that I've played and certainly seen, uh, everybody uses the hero coins. It brings more fun to the game. But he has extended the use of hero coins. So previously, yeah, so if you spent your hero coin, you added a D12, which is the ultimate dice, to any roll. Now you can also spend your hero coin to just re-roll a dice, or you can use it to add ultimate dice roll to your current roll, or you can give your hero coin to another player. So let's have a look at character creation. So yes, he has revived the steps to character creation. So first of all, you choose a concept, which is your name and image. You choose a life form, which is your... In other games, it could be your race, which is dependent on the world setting you are using. And the choices have been altered to the previous versions. You choose a type, which is like a, a class. And again, that is taken from the world section that you're using. Then you write a one-line story. Then with your six core stats, you now sp spend your six points onto those six core stats. You no longer spend those points on effort and armor, just the six core stats. Once you've done that, you calculate your defense, which is your con stat, plus all your defense from your loot and your gear, and that gives you your total defense. And the maximum your total defense can be is plus 10. Then you, sp you add four points to your effort, and your efforts are basic, which is your D4, Weapon, which is D6, Gun, D8, Magic, D10, and Ultimate, D12. You start with one heart, and the heart, as we know from previous editions, is 10 hit points, and you choose one ability from your type. If you are playing superheroes from the Vigilante City rules, you choose three powers. If you're playing Cyberpunk, then you record your augments, and then you take one starting loot from the type and four basic loot from your world. Also, that's come across from the Quick Start Edition is Mastery. So every time you roll a natural 20 on the D20 with the roll, you mark a point. When you've gained 20 points, you gain a Mastery Milestone. And then you reset your Mastery back to zero. And you can do that a maximum of three times. So you, the maximum you'll get is 63 natural 20s. I don't know how long it's going to take you to do that. And you'll have three Mastery Milestones. Let's have a look at the classes. Each class has a starting ability, and usually you get a choice of three. You have some starting loot, again, usually a choice of three. Then it lists the milestone abilities, and that's usually a choice of six or seven. And then you've got your masteries, and again, there's three of those. Have a look at Alfheim. For each of these settings, you usually get six things you know about the world, and this gives you your background to the world, and it's a nice way, without reading reams and reams about the world, it's six things that all players know. The life forms you get in Elfheim are Human, Dwarf, Elf, Torton, which is a new turtle type, and Goblin, which is a goblin type. Small folks and hill folk have gone. The types have changed. You now get Warrior, Hunter, Shadow, Bard, Mage and Priest, and gone are Guardian, Blade, Archer, Scout, Commander, and Wilding. You get customized loot for the world, and you get basic loot, and you can choose for those. For the Alfheim setting, you get um, Intelligence and Wisdom spells, and those spells are largely uh, similar to you got in the core book, but now they've been customized for Alfheim. Then we have the Warp Shell setting, and the life forms for Warp Shell are Geno, Zill, Reptoid, Kit, which is a new cat type, Mecha, Ghost Armor, which is a new Supernaturals type, which is dressed in armor, and the Psyker has gone. Types have also changed. You now get Pilot, Gunner, Mechanic, Navigator, Science, and Echo, and gone are Ghost, Zurin, Blip, Fragment, Titan, Outsider. Then we have a section on Advanced Heroes. Um, the basic rules uses simple milestones, but now for the Advanced Heroes, we have Milestones Pass as an alternative, which can be used with any class. And they've each got different names like Path of Iron, Path of Smoke, and these are rewarded at specific tiers. And they are in four tiers, and each tier, you must have two milestones from a previous tier to get a, the new tier. If you want a second tier, milestone, then you must already have two first tier milestones. 
you can switch paths at any time and each tier has a number of choices for you to pick from and these are your special abilities. And there's lots of gym and play advice on how to use these optional ideas and how to integrate them into the game. Now one of the best parts of ICRPG in its previous form, and this is no change, is the GM section. And this is the, one of the best GM sections you'll find in any RPG. And it's one of my three go-tos that I recommend for any new GMs. Read ICRPG, read Dungeon World, and read Minera or Cypher. All three of those give great advice for new GMs. There are very minor changes to the GM section. Um, all the previous good advice is there. He's included a new simpler effort system as an option. And basically, this only requires two successes to complete a task, as opposed to burning up one heart. There's your usual section on room design, threats, treats, and timers, which you can port across to any game. When it comes to target numbers, instead of target numbers just being between 10 and 18, he's now even simplified it. So target numbers are either 10 for easy, 12 for average, 15 for challenging, and 18 for brutal. So just a choice of four target numbers. Again, the easy and hard checks remain with plus three or minus three. But what has been added to this section is you can now have target damage. Some abilities can alter the target number, uh, as can some loot. So for example, if you hold a torch in a dark place, you can reduce the target number by one. For example, if you are have a target number of 12 down a dungeon and you've got a torch, you could reduce this to 11. But you can never reduce a target number by more than three. He's also included lots of examples of uh, target numbers for new players. So if you're not sure what your target number should be, he's given you some examples so you can compare your situation to that. Okay, timers. Well, timers is another big one. Uh, it was a good innovation for the original Index Card RPG. And he's got some new uses for timers that have come out over play over the years from his Patreon community and his Discord community. One of them is explained imminence. You know that something is about to happen. You know exactly what it is and you roll to see how many rounds it occurs. Then we had world timers. And world timers are something that a huge event that is going to affect the game. And sometimes you can set this at the beginning of a game or when a certain event happens you can have the world timer going as well as minor little timers as well. You can also have timers that instead of being round timers that are turn timers so that after each player has been the timer is reduced by one and this can make it a quite a brutal game. There's also static death timers so instead of rolling a d4 to see how long you die it could be a fixed number depending on what sort of game you're running so it could be set to a two for example if you've got a rather brutal game that you want to run there's also ideas for using timers for reload or recharging equipment or guns there's also uh, effort as a timer so instead of setting having a set effort in hearts that the gm would roll a timer dice to decide how much effort you have to spend to complete the task and there's also ways that you can alter the timer by damaging it, increasing or decreasing the timer. And one of this might be, for example, the GM rolls that a building is on fire and in D4 rounds it is going to explode. But the, one of the players decides he's going to use a fire extinguisher and for every round he uses the fire extinguisher, he increases the timer by one or stops it from counting down. So all new good stuff there for, for timers that have come out in actual play. Then we look at defense rolls. So defense replaces armor. And there's an option here for using the defense stat instead of dex or strength to prevent some effect. And this rewards players who invest in armor. For example, if you are invest you're wearing heavy armor and you fall off a building, then instead of rolling for your con or your strength or your dex to, to reduce your damage then would you, you would roll your armor and there's a nice little option you can add in there but it also adds that gms can damage players defenses and, and thus 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 is a bit shakespearean isn't it where did that word come from uh yeah so players gms can damage players defenses and make their defenses not as good He's also ported the Wizard's Lock from across from the Quick Start 2E. So this is sort of a, a way that you can mix your worlds up and you can warp. Uh, you can travel from one of the world settings to another world setting. And it's one of the things, it's, it's a nice way to create mashups. Then comes the huge bestiary. And the bestiary now has been uh, is one of the biggest changes to ICRPG. He's hugely simplified it. And it's taking, instead of taking a whole page each, each beast now, 
takes up only half a page. And each beast or monster is represented by a number of hearts. Their stat bonuses now have reduced it to four or five abilities. It makes it a lot simpler to use the beasts in the book. There's also a new system of creating your own monsters, which are now created in tiers. And there's four tiers of monster, tier one to four. And for each tier, you have a stat roll bonus, an effort bonus, number of actions they can take, number of hearts they, they have, and a suggested uh, ability or ability type. If you just want to grab a quick creature on the fly and you decide it's going to be a tier two, you look at tier two, see the, the bonus, how much effort bonus they get, number of actions, number of hearts, and an ability, and you're up and running really quick. And that is the first 152 pages. That is the basic rules all together uh, with the GM advice and the bestiary. From this point forward is the amalgamation of the five worlds. We've got Alfheim, Warp Shell, Ghost Mountain, Blood and Snow, and Vigilante City. As I said before, there is no altered state in this. This remains at a standalone product. And there's 160 pages here uh, covering the five worlds. All the stuff that was in the different collections before is now found in this 160 pages. Then we move up to the magic section. Now, I was never a fan of the magic book. I just felt it overcomplicated it. It was too much deviation from the norm. And yeah, I just wasn't a fan of it. Well, he's rewritten that completely and it's down to 40 pages. So that's a big plus point. Magic has now got four levels and the four levels uh, multiply the effect. So a level... So if you do a spell at level one, uh, it has a one times effect. And if you do the same spell at level three, then it would do three amounts the times of damage or three times the amount of effect. He's also got the stun using stun points um, for casting spells and using the stun points, it's two stun points per level. So that will cost you between two and eight points uh, of stun to cast your spells. And you only start with 10 stun points. There's options for rolling as per the core and the burn system where you bypass a guaranteed roll, but you actually use spell burn, which you'll remember from the original rolls. There's also a new maze creation rules, spells as potions. So these are like single use spells, um, how to create a magic base for or a magic tower with how to run it, uh, how to keep it and how to stop others taking it from you. And then we come onto the spell listings. Uh, spells are divided into arcane, holy and infernal. And there's four levels of each spells. And there's a good list of spells there for you to peruse. As we come to the end of the book, there's the table section. And as you already know, remember, the table section in ICRPG with the loot tables, was some, there's some cracking tables in there, which you could use. Um, and those are all there. And there's two new tables, uh, one for ghost mountain loot and another one for magic loot. My final thoughts on ICRPG Master Edition. For me, it's a must buy. I'm a big fan of ICRPG. I think it's really easy to run. Anybody that has played a D20 system will adapt to it really easy. It gives great advice. I think it's just a great toolbox to have in your kit. If you want to run a game, you can just break it out and be up and running in no time and you can simplify it even more. If I was to pick one RPG to keep, I was only allowed to keep one book, this would be the one book that I kept if I had to get rid of all my others because I could run anything with it. If you've not checked it out before, check out the quick start. You can pick that up drive through RPG, no cost whatsoever. I see RPG, a big thumbs up from here. Oh, dragons are real. So that is it. Episode 100 is in the bag. Some people thought it would never happen, but it's there. It's in the bag. So I'd like to thank you all for listening. It's been a pleasure. Um, check out YouTube. I'm going to be doing some videos soon. I think I'm going to do some more Foundry videos because I know I've been re requested for some of them. So thanks very much. And I'll catch you all on the flip side. If you want more information, check out the website at petejones.neocities.org. The blog is at dragonsarealpodcast.tumblr.com. If you want to contact me, you can email me at dragonsarealpodcast at pm.me, or you can catch me over in the OSR Anchorites audio dungeon Discord server, which are linked in the show notes. <laughs>